Hello guys, I'm so sorry I'm late. I was not able to get connected. Finally I got. How are you all? Thank you for waiting for me. You're excited about the answer key, eh? Hello, hello. I'm so sorry that I'm late. Sometimes it's difficult to get connected. Good evening, good evening. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Without wasting time, I think we can start. Hannah? Right. Uh oh. Remember our Unacademy girl? An academy course, MCQ course, complete course. MCQ course is on non-British literatures. Complete course is on everything. And you get PDFs and videos. Okay. Recap. A couple of questions from the past topics. Ready guys? Ready to recap the past topics? I saw eternity the other night like a great ring of pure and endless light all calm as it was bright these are lines written by I'm asking you from metaphysical poetry these are lines written by thank you for waiting for me though I'm late I know answer key is out. I heard that. I saw eternity the other night. I didn't see the answer key though. I didn't see it. I was teaching all day. Who wrote I saw eternity the other night? Like a great ring of pure and endless light. You are in no mood to answer the questions, I know, because everybody is excited about the answer key. Did you check with the answer key? I didn't see the answer key. <laughs> Don't be scared. Just relax and enjoy and... I saw eternity the other night. It is Henry Vaughan. It is the poem, The World. It is the poem, The World. Did you check with the answer key, guys? You should. You can slowly relax and do properly. <laughs> then... The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg that appear on an advertising billboard act as an important symbol in a literary work. Identify the work. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg they appear on an advertising billboard. These eyes act as an important symbol in a literary work. Identify the work. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg appears in one spectacle billboard. Faded. It is in the great Gatsby. It is like the eyes of God looking down upon the materialistic people. It is like the eyes of God looking down upon the materialistic people. Will you remember? It is in the great Gatsby. Talk polite, white man. Talk polite. You hear me? I'm both here now. Are you forgetting? Which of the following characters says this? Talk polite, white man. Talk polite. You hear me? I am boss here now. Are you forgetting? Saima is asking, did anybody download answer key? Yes, 
Is it Yank in the Hairy Ape? Jim in the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? Tom Robinson in To Kill a Mockingbird? Brutus Jones in Emperor Jones? Are guys, talk polite, white man. You hear me? I am boss here. It is Brutus Jones talking to Smithers. It is Brutus Jones talking to Smithers. He's saying, I am the boss here now. Are you forgetting? Did you understand? It's not A. It is Brutus Jones and Emperor Jones. A Q bol re ho. Yang kisko bolega ye? Why would he call anybody white man? Because Yank is black, Yank is white. Yank is not a black man. Jim is very polite. Jim will never say this. Jim will never say this. This is not like Jim's character at all. Tom Robinson also is a black man, but he will never say this. It is Brutus Jones in Emperor Jones. Okay? Now, Southern Agrarians. Southern Agrarians are Southern American poets based in Vanderbilt University. Repudiated many modernist developments in favor of metrical verse and narrative. Navaneet is asking how to download answer key. Sonali. Emperor Jones is about a black man. Uh, he used to be an African American pullman porter in America. And uh, then he killed a man called Jeff. He got imprisoned. From there, um, he escaped, reached the Caribbean island where one Smithers is already white man oppressing everyone. And um, Emperor Jones becomes emperor there. He oppresses the black people. He teaches the black people that he can never be killed. He can be killed only with a silver bullet and there is no silver in that island. He wears a silver bullet on his chest as a talisman and tells everybody, you can't kill me. But the natives get hold of silver, they prepare a rebellion against him and he runs through the forest thinking he can escape, but he cannot escape. His own past unconscious haunts him. He becomes very... Uh, Traumatized internally, his own mind haunts him and the forest becomes like his mind. In six hallucinations, he loses all his power, his civilization and trappings and he um, falls into the hands of the natives themselves and dies. There are eight scenes, six hallucinations, one introduction and one conclusion. Okay. So, Southern Agrarians is another name for New Critics. American New Critics are also called Southern Agrarians. The Southern Agrarians repudiated many modernist developments. They rejected modernist developments in favor of metrical verse and narrative. Some Southern Agrarians were associated with New Criticism. John Crow Ransom. Robert Penn Warren, Alan Tate. Let me see if you were paying attention. The Southern Agrarians were associated with the Dash University. Bolo. Ha, I am a little tired because I have a headache today and it's also because my hair is a little not properly done today. That's why. I was making PowerPoint uh, questions and everything and I didn't get time to do my hair. Southern agrarians were associated with which university? Bolo. 
I already told you I am checking whether you paid attention. It is indeed Vanderbilt University. The Southern Agrarians, they were from the South of America. They were from the Southern States of America. Associated with Vanderbilt University. Okay? Then, the Southern Agrarians were pioneers of the Southern Renaissance in America. What do you mean by that? The revival of Southern American literature. American Southern literature is revived at this time. Which of these writers given below were associated with Southern Renaissance? Were all of them associated? Which of these were associated with Southern Renaissance? Bolo. Which of these associ were associated with Southern Renaissance? William Faulkner definitely was associated. Tennessee Williams definitely was associated. Then Thomas Wolfe also associated. Walt Whitman, no. Why? He was from Massachusetts, New England. He was from Massachusetts, New England area. That is North. Walt Whitman, definitely not Southern. Did you understand? Walt Whitman, definitely not Southern. You should never make a mistake. Walt Whitman is 100% Northerner. Did you understand? Never make this mistake. Got it? Okay. Poets of the 30s. Ready guys? The poets of the 30s were poets or ch children of the First World War. They were children of the First World War. They came after the First World War. They were disconcerted by war, communalism and by class struggle. They were so unhappy with war, with communalism, with class struggle. The poets of the 30s had passionate belief in the social responsibility of poets. They were pink poets, partly communist. No Sabir. Then they had classical outlook, but did not engage in experimentation. They had leftist leanings. And they were educated at Oxford. They fought in the uh, Spanish Civil War. They were all Oxford educated. Classical. Okay. Now, W.H. Arden, Stephen Spender, Cecil Day-Lewis, Louis McNeese. Poets of the 30s. Also called Pink Poets. Pylon Poets. Hena. Arden Group, Max Ponde. Now, look at this. The Dance of Death is a satirical, musical extravaganza that portrays the death inside the middle classes as a silent dancer. Death inside the middle classes is portrayed as a silent dancer. Who is the author? Who wrote The Dance of Death? Satirical, musical extravaganza portraying death inside the middle classes as a silent dancer. Bolo? Kisne likha? The dance of death. <laughs> dance of death is by W.H. Auden. The Dance of Death is by W.H. Auden. Will you remember? Then, 
The White Goddess by Robert Graves is a highly scholarly and rather eccentric work. The White Goddess by Robert Graves. Highly scholarly and eccentric work. What is it about? What is it about the white goddess? The white goddess by Robert Graves. Is it about a historical grammar of poetic myth? Is it an ethnographic study of war? Is it about the evolution of poetic history? Is it uh, an evolutionary theory of race? A historical grammar of poetic myth is correct. Historical grammar of poetic myth. The white goddess is about historical grammar of poetic myth. One of the 30s poets wrote a poem describing cities as against the countryside. What is described here as? Like nude giant girls that have no secret. What is described in that poem? As like nude giant girls that have no secret. One of the 30s poets wrote a poem about the city and countryside. It is Stephen Spender in the poem, The Pylons. Stephen Spender in the poem, The Pylons. Pylons are big uh, technological things used in electrical transmission. In electrical transmission, in electric line, they use pylons. Will you remember? Pylons are technological things used in electrical transmission. Stephen Spender's Pylons is a very important poem. And the poets were called Pylon poets. Hena Pylon poets. Then New Apocalypse. New Apocalypse are the neo-romantic poets of the 1940s. The New Apocalypse poets are also called neo-romantic poets. Dylan Thomas and others in the 1940s. They wrote with intense imaginative subjectivity. The movement got its name from the anthology The New Apocalypse, edited by Henry Trees and J.F. Henry. Henry Trees and J.F. Henry brought out the anthology The New Apocalypse. They were also influenced by D.H. Lawrence's last book, Apocalypse which is a radical criticism of civilization. Remember D.H. Lawrence, the modernist poet? D.H. Lawrence's last novel, mm -hmm, novel nahi, last book is Apocalypse. It is a radical criticism of civilization. Like the wastelands. That also influenced Dylan Thomas's group. Two later anthologies were The White Horseman, The Sword and The Sickle. The white horseman and the sword and the sickle. Will you remember all these details? Important figures are Dylan Thomas, Norman McCaig. Um, apocalypse means death of uh, earth, end of the earth, destruction. Apocalypse means everything is going to end, everything is going to die. Post apocalyptic fiction means. Post-apocalyptic fiction means about the end of the earth. Hena? So, new apocalypse poets are Dylan Thomas, Norman McCaig. Tell me now, which of these works represent themes of Christian nativity? Which of these works present 
themes of Christian nativity. Do you know? Which of these works is it? Altar wise by owl light. Relic. A drunk man looks at the thistle. Autumn journal. Which of these works presents Christian nativity? Remember nativity ode of John Milton? Bolo. Which of these works present themes of Christian nativity? It is Dylan Thomas's Altar Wise by Owl Light. Remember altar, altar. Altar. Remember it is Christian, na? It is not relic. It is altar wise by owl light by Dylan Thomas. They will ask such questions. They are all important. Then, Dylan Thomas says, Do not go gentle into that good night. Is addressed to his mother, father, wife, himself. Dylan Thomas says, Do not go gentle into that good night. Is addressed to whom? Who, to whom is has he addressed? Do not go gentle into that good night. Guys, today I will give PDF in the group, okay? Today, uh, join the te telegram group if you haven't. I will give the PDF in the group. Literary movements uh, course is over. So, do not go gentle into that good night. It is addressed to his father. Dylan Thomas says, Do not go gentle into that good night. It is addressed to his father who was dying. Next, movement poets. Remember, 1930s, 30s poets. 1940s, new apocalypse. 1950s movement poets. Will you remember? To get my telegram link, please uh, WhatsApp, send me a WhatsApp message, guys. To get my telegram link, WhatsApp me. 9037357688. Movement poets were famous in the 1950s. The movement poets employed a rational, empirical and argumentative tone. The movement poets had a very rational tone. Empirical means experience based, argumentative tone. They employed traditional syntax, ordinary diction. They did not experiment like modernists. Traditional syntax, ordinary diction, colloquial style. The movement poets, rational, empirical, argumentative. Traditional syntax, ordinary diction. They had two anthologies, famous anthologies of movement poets. Poets of the 1950s, edited by B.J. Enright. Wow, it was published in Japan. Poets of the 1950s was published in Japan. And New Lines edited by Robert Conquest. Got it everybody? Now, movement poets are Philip Larkin, Tom Gunn, Elizabeth Jennings. Elizabeth Jennings was a movement poet with a difference. You know why? Because Elizabeth Jennings wrote about two themes that are not typical of movement poets. Elizabeth Jennings wrote about Roman Catholicism as well as mental disorder. Roman Catholicism as well as mental disorder. Philip Larkin, Tom Gunn, Elizabeth Jennings. You are ready for questions guys? Philip Larkin's poem M M C M X I V. What is that? Is on the theme of dash. Religion. War, scholarship, history. Religion, war, scholarship, history. Bolo, Philip Larkin's poem, MCMX4. 
What does it mean? It means 1914. 1914. Nahi nahi, Shabana. Tedux is not apocalyptic. Tedux is not neo apocalyptic. He comes in movement, partly, yes. Philip Larkins, 1914, is about the year in which First World War began, hai na? So, war is the answer. War is the answer. Then, in Philip Larkins' poem, Mr. Blini, the speaker is Dash. Philip Larkins' famous poem is there, Mr. Blini. What is the speaker doing? Searching for a lost friend, remembering his school days, renting a room. That is in telephone conversation, hai na? Then visiting a local church. Bolo. In Philip Larkin's poem, Mr. Blini, the speaker is doing what? Is he searching for a lost friend? Remembering his school days. Renting a room like in telephone conversation. Or visiting a local church. Bolo. Mr. Blini, con hai? Me batao. Sab log galat bol rahe hain. It is renting a room. Landlady. Mr. Blini is the person who used to live there before. Mr. Blini is the person who used to live there before. Telephone conversation bol ke maine. Hey, I cheated you. It is like telephone conversation. In gate exam they will ask. What is common between Mr. Blini by Philip Larkin and telephone conversation by Bole Soinka? Answer is both of them are renting a room. Both of them are renting a room. Tike, will you remember now? Philip Larkin says, uh, Can't I use my wit as a pitchfork and drive the brute off? Can't I? Ah, yes, Ted Hughes is an animal poet. Can't I use my wit as a pitchfork and drive the brute off? What is he referring to as brute? Bolo, what is he referring to as brute? It is. Is it money? Is it tradition, memories, work? It is work. In which poem? Todd's. He is referring to work as Todd's that are squatting on him. He is referring to the brute. Todd work. Todd work. Will you remember? Todd work. Angry young man movement. Angry young man movement. Angry young man movement is the 1950s movement. Angry young man movement, 1915s movement that came along with the movement poets. The movement poets and angry young man movement, both 1950s. Okay guys, angry young man, also 1950s. A group of mostly working and middle class British playwrights, British playwrights and novelists both who became prominent in the 1950s. The angry young man movement voiced the frustrations of the disillusioned post-war generation. You know that, right? Post-war generation was disillusioned because they had lost their educational opportunities. They had lost their career opportunities. They expressed impatience and resentment at the hypocrisy and mediocrity of the upper and middle classes. 
they did not like the hypocrisy and mediocrity of the middle class. Did you understand? They are very impatient and resentful, angry young man. John Osborne, Alan Silito, Kingsley Amis, John Wayne, John Brain, Arnold Wesker. Okay, let me ask you some questions. Who wrote Young Shoulders? Who wrote Young Shoulders? R.S. Abir Ted Hughes wrote a lot about animals. That is why he is called Animal Poet. Bolo? Who wrote Young Shoulders? John Wayne. John Wayne wrote Young Shoulders. Who wrote Room at the Top? Who wrote Room at the Top? It is John Brain. Remember, Brain is Room at the Top. Room at the Top is John Brain. Who wrote Saturday Night and Sunday Morning? Who wrote Saturday Night and Sunday Morning? It is Alan Silito. Saturday Night and Sunday Morning. And also, loneliness of the long distance runner. Hena, who wrote The Entertainer? The Entertainer is by John Osborne. The Entertainer, Archie Rice is the protagonist. Who wrote The Old Devils? The Old Devils, that is a Booker Prize winning novel by Kingsley Amis. The Old Devils, Hena. Then, who wrote uh, Chicken Soup with Barley, Roots and I am talking about Jerusalem. Who wrote Chicken Soup with Barley, Roots and I am talking about Jerusalem. That is Arnold Wesker. Arnold Wesker also led to Kitchen Sink Realism. Kitchen Sink Realism. Okay. Now, which of the following is a resist, symbol of resistance in look back in anger? Which of the following is a symbol of Jimmy's resistance in look back in anger? Jimmy is always smoking a pipe. Jimmy and Cliff are reading newspapers together. Jimmy plays a jazz trumpet. The church bells are always being heard. Church bells of Big Ben. That is also a symbol in Mrs. Dalloway. Mrs. Dalloway. It is all our symbols, but most important is most important is jazz trumpet. Jazz trumpet is the most important symbol symbol of his anger. When he gets angry, he goes and plays the trumpet. Church bells is opposite. It is not a symbol of resistance. It is a symbol of conformity. It is a symbol of middle class conformity. All middle class people go to church. You know that is middle class conformity. Did you understand? Then, who among the following directed the movie? Look back in anger. Who among the following directed the movie Look Back in Anger? Is it James Cameron, Tony Richardson, Peter Jackson, Tim Burton? All are very famous. It is Tony Richardson. Tony Richardson, famous director in Hollywood. Tony Richardson directed the movie Look back in anger. Okay, Tony Richardson. An Academy girl says, Okay, answer key has, key has come. If you want to study for JRF, some of you will not get JRF this time. Next time you will get, you can join an Academy and study with our courses. Ta da da! Shams Tabrez, I saw what you had written. Shams Tabrez, I saw what you had written. Okay. Kitchen sink drama. Yeah. 
British cultural movement developed from angry young man movement in the late 1950s and 60s. It developed in theater, art, novels, film, and television plays. Chaucer's April is the uh, sweetest month means he is praising uh, spring. But in modernism, there is no rebirth, there is no fertility. So April becomes the cruelest month. Did you understand? April is the cruelest month in wasteland because there is no hope, there is no rebirth, there is no fertility. Now, kitchen sink drama Writers depicted the squalor and discontentment of modern society. Okay. Major figures. Arnold Wesker who wrote Trilogy of Plays. Chicken Soup with Barley. Roots. And I am talking about Jerusalem. That, that is Arnold Wesker trilogy. What did Sheila Delany write? What did Sheila Delany write? A taste of honey. A taste of honey. Sheila Delany's kitchen sink drama. Ready for questions, guys? The term kitchen sink realism came from John Bradby's paintings. What theme did Brat B paint? Domesticity, femininity, poverty, class oppression. The term kitchen sink realism came from John Brat B's paintings. What theme did Brat B paint? Later, David Sylvester wrote an essay also on kitchen sink realism. John Bradby painted what? Chips with everything is not part of Arnold Wesker trilogy. You are confused. Ace English. Chips with everything is another work. Chicken soup with Pali. Roots and I am talking about Jerusalem are the three works. Of the trilogy. Yes, it is domesticity. Domesticity. Kitchen sings. He depicted. Kitchen sink he depicted. Domesticity it is. Correct. Then the Khan family in Arnold Wesker trilogy are communists, trade unionists, Salvation Army officers, jazz enthusiasts. Bolo. The Khan family in Arnold Wesker trilogy. Communists, trade unionists, Salvation Army Officers, Jazz Enthusiasts. Kya hoga? Rani Khan, Ada Khan, their parents. They are communists. They are Jewish communists. They are Jews and communists. Will you remember guys? They are Jews as well as communists. Okay. Beat generation. Ready guys? Beat generation. It is not Salvation Army. I just made it up myself. Beat generation. They are primarily poets. The beat generation is a counterculture and youth culture movement. Beginning in the 1950s. They rejected materialism, capitalism, war. Bourgeois social values and formalism. Beat generation did not write in any form. They did not conform to any form. They rejected social values. They rejected materialism and capitalism and war. They had unconventional views on sexuality, interracial relations. They were inspired by Buddhism and Eastern spirituality. That is the beat generation. Did you understand? Beat generation. Major figures are Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, William S. Burroughs, Ken Casey, Gregory Corso. Will you remember guys? 
Beat Generation Vigas. Jack Kerouac. Alan Ginsberg. What did Jack Kerouac write? What did Jack Kerouac write? One book bolo on the road. What did Alan Ginsberg write? Howl. What did William S. Burroughs write? Naked Lunch. Tare. What did Ken Casey write? Gregory Corso, I don't know. Okay? Now, Jack Dulwars is the alter ego. Jack Dulwars is the alter ego of Jack Dulwars is the alter ego of Is it Alan Ginsberg? Jack Kerouac? William S. Barrows or Neil Cassidy? ta -da -da, It is Jack Kerouac. Jack Dulwars is the Alter ego of Jack Kerouac. Will you remember? Then, in the poem, A Supermarket in California, the speaker has a vision of Dash. In the poem, A Supermarket in California, the speaker has a vision of Dash. The speaker gets a vision of the Buddha, Abraham Lincoln, Walt Whitman, George Washington. In a supermarket in California, the speaker gets a vision of... The speaker gets a vision of... Tanadang! It is Walt Whitman. It is Walt Whitman whose poems he had been reading. Uh, Alan Ginsberg had been reading Walt Whitman. <laughs> now you have idea. Now you will remember. He was reading Walt Whitman's poems and he gets a vision of Walt Whitman. Then, next is postmodernism. Postmodernism is a literary movement embracing diversity, wordplay, and other attributes of modern literature. Literary movement, embracing diversity, word play, other attributes of modern literature in a new way. Jorge Luis Borges, Salman Rushdie, Thomas Pynchon, important figures. Hannah, who of the following wrote the short story Entropy? Famous short story, Entropy, playing on the concept of thermodynamics related to the scientist James Clark Maxwell. Who of the following wrote the short story, Entropy? Do you have any idea? Short story, Entropy. See this? This man who wrote Entropy wrote many of his books based on signs only. That is the clue. The man who wrote Entropy wrote many of his books based on signs. So, uh, the, what is it called? Uh, engineering and all he used in his works. In his novels, he used engineering physics. So, bolo. Who wrote the short story, Entropy? ta -da -da! It is Thomas Pynchon. Wonderful. It is indeed Thomas Pynchon. Thomas Pynchon wrote the short story, Entropy, playing on thermodynamics related to the scientist James Clerk Maxwell. Who defined postmodernism as the literature of exhaustion? Do you know that? Who defined postmodernism as the literature of exhaustion? We are exhausted. That is postmodern. Is it Jorge Luis Borges, Salman Rushdie, John Barth, Thomas Fingen? Bolo, bolo, bolo. MP Gharel, sir. 
टूनाइट आई विल गिव यू दिस पी डी एफ ओके हा सुनीति वी लिखा था थॉमस पिंजन ने ये लतिका आईसे कैसे माफ क्यों बोल रही है आईसे कैसे माफ तो है ही नहीं यहां ऐसे कैसे मैं उसको मिस कर रही है क्या लदिका लेकिन ऑप्शन में नहीं है लिटरेचर ऑफ एक्सोजन जॉन बार्थ ऐसे इट इज जॉन बार्थ रोट लिटरेचर ऑफ एक्सोशन एंड लिटरेचर ऑफ एक्स रिप्लेनिशमेंट टू ऐसे फेमस लिटरेचर ऑफ एक्सोशन लिटरेचर ऑफ रिप्लेनिशमेंट इंडियन इंग्लिश है क्या जी सेट में अभी ओ जी सेट के लिए मैं कल से इंडियन इंग्लिश का शुरू करूं लिटरेरी क्लासेस को क्रैश कोर्स क्रैश कोर्स शुरू करूं इंडियन इंग्लिश में टुमोरो तो संडे है ना मैं नहीं करूंगी सैटरडे संडे मुझे फ्री चाहिए सैटरडे संडे फ्री दे दो ना मुझे हॉलीडे चाहिए मुझे absurdism derived from absurdist philosophy which argues that life is inherently purposeless and questions truth and value what do you mean by truth what do you mean by value absurdist literature and theater of the absurd often include dark humor satire and incongruity dark humor satire and incongruity ठीक है एब्सर्डिज्म मेजर फिगर्स जॉन पॉल सार्थ ठीक है इंडियन लिटरेचर एंड दलित लिटरेचर कर देती हूं करती हूं मंडे से एब्सर्डिज्म जॉन पॉल सार्थ सैम्यूएल बेकेट एल्बर्ट कम्यू गाओ जिंजियन आम आई एम फाइन लतिका आई एम फाइन विथ गॉड्स ग्रेज ए मैन टच वर्ड बोलो बेरेंजर इन आई एन एस कोर्स प्लेज इज डैश ठीक है राहिला मंडे से बेरेंजर इन आई एन एस कोर्स प्लेस अ मैन हु सर्वाइव मिशाप इन द मिडस्ट ऑफ कैस एंड एवरी मैन हु फाइंड लाइफ अनफुलफिलिंग अ सिंपल टन हु डजेंट मेक सेंस ऑफ लाइफ नन ऑफ दिस a man who survives mishaps in the midst of chaos and every man who finds life unfulfilling a simple ten who doesn't make sense of life none of these to bolo baranjar is what choose karo na ye question hai aap log kya kya likh rahe hain iska answer bolo na a b c d Berenger is an every man who finds life unfulfilling. Utra simpleton bhi nahi hai. Theek hai? Berenger simpleton no. He is an every man who finds life unfulfilling. Now, David Campton, Nigel Dennis and N F Simpson are all associated with is it comedy of menace? Theater of cruelty? People's Theatre, Theatre Workshop. David Campton, Nigel Dennis, and Neff Simpson, all associated with. They are all associated with Harold Pinter's Comedy of Menace. Harold Pinter's Comedy of Menace. याद रहेगा. confessional poetry poetry that often brutally exposes the self as part of an aesthetic of the beauty and power of human frailty brutally exposes the self robert lovell sylvia plath and sexton robert lovell taught sylvia plath at dash tarang do you know Robert Lovell taught Sylvia Plath at Dash. That is right, lunatic view. That is where it was first 
coined this term. It was subtitle or something. Comedy of Menace. David Campton's lunatic view. Robert Lovell taught Sylvia Plath at which university? It is Boston University. Robert Lovell taught Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton. Okay, Boston University. Which of the confessional poets is famous for the dream songs? Kisne likha? Dream songs. Which of the confessional poets is famous for the dream songs? It is not Robert Lovell. His most famous book is Life Studies. It is John Berryman. John Berryman wrote the dream songs. Theek hai? Magical realism. Literary movement in which magical elements appear in otherwise realistic circumstances. Magical elements in otherwise realistic circumstances. Often associated with Latin American literary boom. Theek hai? Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Octavio Paz, Gunther Gras, Julio Cortazar. Who among these writers wrote the debut novel, The House of the Spirits? Telling the story of the Trueba family, spanning four generations. Who among these writers wrote the debut novel, The House of the Spirits? Yes. Franz Roa coined the term magical realism. Correct. Who wrote the debut novel, The House of the Spirits, telling the story of the Trueba family spanning four generations? Is it Alejo Carpenter? Isabel Allende? Mario Vargas Llosa? None of these. ta -da -da. It is Isabel Allende. Isabel Allende. <laughs> Who among these characters is the protagonist of a magic realist novel by Chitra Banerjee Divakarudi? Who among these characters is the protagonist of a... Ma okay, okay, Kamala Das. Hey. Magic realist novel by Chitra Banerjee Divakarni. Is it Shakundala, Sita, Urmila, Subhadra? Chitra Banerjee Divakarni ne likha. Shakundala, Sita, Urmila, Subhadra. <coughs> Nehito, it is Sita in the forest of enchantments. Sita in the forest of enchantments. She also wrote the palace of illusions from the point of view of Draupadi. Sita hai, Draupadi bhi hai. Thik hai? Gus Gai, Unacademy Girl. Unacademy Girl wants you to try out MCQ course and complete course because it will be amazing in your preparation. Monday, say Indian literature and Dalit literature, completely new materials. Like never before, Kalyani Valat brings you Indian literature and Dalit literature. At 10 p.m. on Dr. Kalyani Vadat channel. Please follow Dr. Kalyani Vadat channel. Subscribe. Like. I say, Bolu Kiaros. That's the end for now. Monday say explosive. <laughs> class explosive test course on Indian literature please join at 10 p.m. 10 10 bhi ho sakta hai jaise aaj tha 10 to 10 10 p.m. kabhi bhi shuru hoega <laughs> okay 10 to 10 p.m. 
आओ कल्याणी वल्लभ चैनल में ऐश करो टाटा बाय बाय सी यू ऑन मंडे बीच में वीकेंड में आएगी कल्याणी वल्लभ विथ किसी और वीडियोस कोई और वीडियोस ठीक है बाय लव यू गुड नाइट गॉड ब्लेस यू